Okay, our last video for chapter three um, starts where we left off with our second one. We have our fish data set, we calculated our z-scores, we calculated our percentiles, super fun stuff. We calculated all of those things, but now we want to think about how we can use that in a more uh, useful way. So I'm going to switch over to StatCrunch here, and all I did was copy and paste our links into here. I could have put the weights in here as well. Um, so um, in our stat menu, and again, whether you're on uh, uh, StatCrunch or SPSS or whatever, um, doesn't matter. If we do go to summary stats and do the thing that we did before, um, you will remember that the IQR was one of the things we could calculate. Um, we also had the quartiles and stuff in there, but actually doing it is, oops, select column blank. Um, actually doing it is pretty easy, and here are all of our numbers, our median, our Q1, our Q3, or our QR. Um, again, notice those numbers match uh, the ones that we have. Um, so our median of 26.75, our median was 26.75, our quartiles, all of that stuff. Um, Excel does a little bit different thing there with the ties to do in between because there were two values. So that's why that number is off just a tiny little bit. Um, it kind of gives a double weight to the one here where we had two numbers at, at 24, and several 23 and a half. Anyway, that's not a big deal. Um, but this idea that we calculate uh, these numbers in exactly the same way. Now, we can use these quartile numbers to make our box plot. So a box plot, we made one for uh, the other assignment, but we didn't really talk about what it was. And if we put length there and we calculate it, um, it does just go ahead and stick the graph like that. So our median is the line. Our first and third quartile are the edges of the box. And uh, the min and the max are where the bars are. Sometimes people call those whiskers, so they call it a box and whisker plot. Um, typically that's older people of a different generation. If there are any outliers, we tend not to uh, include those in the chart as they are. Instead, we mark those outliers as uh, um, a little asterisk or something in our data set. Okay, and so that idea that then now more broadly, we can use box plots with our five number summary. The five number summary is based off of the median, the quartiles. We could also use uh, normal things, calculate the z-scores from the standard deviation. Calculating the standard deviation is tedious, but not hard. Subtract the number from the mean, square it, add them all up, divide by n minus one, take the square root of that. Right? Again, each step is something you totally know how to do. You maybe didn't love doing it in algebra class, but you could do it. Having a computer do it is, of course, a lot easier. So with these simple calculations, and again, so often there's a lot of them. If you imagine real data sets where you have thousands or millions of entries, calculating standard deviation is something you would never want to do by hand, but it's where the action is. It's how we make models. When I do fancy things in my data mining class, or we're trying to do predictive algorithms with Netflix or Amazon or something like that, Standard deviation is an important part of those models, and knowing how it's calculated is kind of important. Again, whether you can add up numbers or square them, I don't really care about that, um, but this idea that you can use them to draw cool and interesting conclusions is what we're going to really be spending the rest of the semester doing. So, all right. Thanks.